Hey everybody, Pam Bam Richard here, and welcome to the finale of the Kirby 64 playthrough. We are now going to be entering the final planet of the solar system here, Ripple Star. Now, stage one of Ripple Star, you might say, is a complete, nearly one-to-one -one copy of Pop Star Stage One. And in fact, you are right. Um, I don't know why they did this, but I mean, at least the aesthetics are different. But um, it's kind of odd that they had to reuse the exact same layout, nearly the exact same layout as a Stage 1, Level 1 Pop Star. But, um, there's a lot of that that also has to involve with the rest of the Crystal Shards in this Stage 2, because, um, they're all pretty much positioned in the ex almost the exact same, uh, spots that you see them in the first level. Like, first Crystal Shard, right there, out in the open, I mean... I don't, I don't really understand why it's a complete carbon copy of it, but it's a little bit of an underwhelming, um, underwhelming sort of, uh, level to get to. But the mini-boss here, what's the boss I was referring to previously, um, yeah, it's a saw that comes out of nowhere, so you really have to be mindful of your positioning. But thankfully, the needle power up here is enough to protrude through the floor and damage the boss while he's still in the ground, so... First two Crystal Shards, just as easy as we ran into them in the first stage, um... Yeah, again, there, <laughs> there isn't really much else to say about this stage. It's so odd how they have it one-to-one, -one, nearly the same as how the first stage is set up in the game. But we will be needing Needle, and we will be needing um, Bomb here to get the final Crystal Shard. But we have to be a little bit careful here because we can't go back to the um, previous area to grab another Needle. So I gotta make sure that... I'm in a proper position to grab this bomb because I'm pretty sure this is the only one that you can access in this segment here. Don't mind getting damage here if I could get that ready and there we go. We got bomb and needle, which again, just like the first level, we need um, at least bomb to get the final crystal shard. But in this case, we need bomb and needle to nab it right over here. Now, before we do leave this level, um, we will need to grab the uh, spark power up all the way at the end here or at the start of the, uh, of this segment here. But, um, as we go through this, uh, Ripple Star here, um, Ripple Star has seen quite a number of, uh, appearances in terms of remixes, at least for the map theme of, um, this planet. You do hear it in, you first hear it remixed in, a uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra. Um, it was remixed in the, uh, Helper to Hero mode, which is pretty much, um, a boss rush where you use the helper characters instead of the instead of Kirby, and um, you later hear it in a uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, which ends up being the uh, map theme for um, Dreamland, which in itself doesn't really make much sense because Dreamland is in a uh, Pop Star as opposed to um, Ripple Star being its entirely own planet, and um, yeah, it it literally just became that. A song where you hear it as like a rest area room. Um, you hear that in um, Helper to Hero as well with the Kirby uh, Triple Deluxe, I would like to say. Well, there's another bomb over there that you could use, but I always get the bomb at the beginning there. Um, since we got a maximum tomato, we'll just get the info card right over here. Um, the reason why we need Spark is because immediately at the start of the next stage, it's all the way at the bottom where we can uh, pick up the crystal shard. Now, initially, I've always thought that you needed spark along with another ability because of how the floor was shaped, but you need just spark in order to break it. I've always thought it was spark and fire because of how the floor was shaped, and I think the player's guide mentioned that too. So I guess that's why I probably had that etched in my memory, but ultimately you just need spark to uh, burst it open here. We got a little bit of swimming right over here, but um, we have to be a little bit mindful of um, the abilities that we need to get here in this area. We do oh, we do need Cutter. I was hoping to use the uh, Dual Saber, but I guess we'll save that for another time. Um, but this will also be the final appearances of where you'll see all your helpers helping out. And uh, unfortunately, you don't get to see much um, use out of them in terms of control. They're all just uh, scripted. Um, Segments in other words, so you don't get to control DDD in this planet nor do you get to control Waddle in this planet either Just small little cutscenes to sort of show hey, they're still here. They're still useful, which apparently um, 
I was looking up some uh, beta footage or beta um, details of this game, and apparently Kirby wasn't going to be the only character you could play as here. You could also... The game was initially going to be planned for you to play as uh, Waddle Dee, Adeline, and King DDD as well in their own segments. Kind of makes you wonder why they changed it, I guess because um, maybe it might lose um, Kirby's identity as a Kirby game, which I think may be the sole reason why they did change it, which I am okay with personally. Um, maybe it would have been cool as an extra mode, like how you would see it in modern Kirby games, how um, they would have Meta Knight or DDD playable in um, the 3DS games. By the way, next crystal shard is all the way to the left here. Um, once again, we do need to keep Cutter for the uh, last crystal shard because... Um, in the next area, we won't be able to use Cutter again if we were to pass get past a specific point. Actually, this, the point is actually right over here where Adeline helps out. So every single character or helper character makes an appearance, and this is also the last appearance of the invisibility candy in this game. So each barricade here um, can be broken by whatever color is marked. You only need Cutter to break off the green one. Everything else here could be broken off for whatever prizes that you can get. But you can get them easily in the bonus game, which we'll be going to right now as we hop onto this uh, little platform here. So yeah, the first two levels are very simple, easy, short, and to the point. So we're just going to grab ourselves a 1-up over here. And um, next level, next stage is uh, one of my favorites. Um, it does give, it does lend tradition to how Kirby games always have the uh, boss rush, in a sense. It would have been much better if we had the mini boss rush, but instead we have a boss rush of um, multiple enemies. And the crystal shards here, the first and the last one are very easy to get, but the middle one, the second crystal shard in this level, is the last one I ever got in my initial playthrough of this game. And um, we'll be getting to that very soon. Um, though, in order to get that, we do need a uh, needle and fire. We only have one half of that right now, and our first crystal shard is right here after defeating this room. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to combine fire and needle in that room because that needle enemy, the needle knight, does block whatever projectiles you toss towards it. So I think we should be able to get the fire in this area here. Just gotta be careful and not be reckless and destroy whatever comes in sight firsthand. I think the fire is to the left? No, it has to be to the right. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty sure it's to the right. Um, this song does also make an appearance in um, Kirby's Triple Deluxe, which was a pleasant surprise because I do like this track because it's like, it does represent that, oh boy, you are getting close to the end of the game now, and um, it does have that menacing feel to it. Um, and to see it come back, even for like uh, the mini boss rush segment of uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe, it's just, it was a very pleasant surprise. And once again, proving the point that Kirby games are all about um, those nostalgia pops, I guess you could call it. Um, but here, this room, it's the last room that I went to in order to get my last crystal shard. Because this one is probably the most cryptic in my opinion, because normally you'd think the um, decal on the floor there... It's essentially just there for display, but turns out it's the final barricade to get your last crystal shard. You have to defeat all the enemies here first, I believe, and then guess what? The floor here is basically designed like a target. You use your bow and arrow, aim at the middle, and grab your crystal shard. <laughs> I I had no idea that was there for the longest time until my friend, um, back when I was younger, who also played through Kirby games, told me that you could get the last crystal shard right over here, and it completely blew my mind. It's one of my most memorable moments of the Kirby game because <laughs> I that was the first time where I actually got um, help from us, uh, something that isn't a guy, but from an actual uh, friend who knew Kirby games. So um, that's why that's like the hardest crystal shard that um, uh, for me at least to get in this game in terms of conveyance. But I'm kind of curious to know if there are any other other people who discovered or figured it out on first go. But the last crystal shard in this uh, stage, the last collectible crystal shard in this game actually, is um, easy to get because it's during your natural progression. You don't, you'd be an idiot if you didn't pick it up. Um, just like how the first room was, you just need to kill all the enemies in the um, 
in the room in order to get it. And I believe this is the last room where you can pick up that crystal shard. Now, um, regarding uh, the progression of this game, if you don't 100% it, um, it does affect a bit of the uh, ending, essentially. Um, you do get a bit of a fake ending as opposed to something that happens later on. Um, but we'll be getting to that very shortly here. Um, just going through some NZs here. And um, just one more final picnic game to get to one of the last bosses of this game. Should have got the maximum tomato, but oh well. Extra life is fine. Alright, and the final boss of Ripple Star is Miracle Matter, one of my favorite gimmicks in a Kirby game, hands down. Um, you can't damage this boss regularly, you can only damage him on the ability that he is showing off. So right now he's showing off ice, and in this form you can only damage him in ice, but when he's out of that form you can't damage him that way. Of course he goes with fire afterwards. So it does actually train you to sort of um, explore and adapt accordingly, which is what Kirby Games has always been about mechanically. Why are we going through fire and ice? It's like the worst combination of all time. You can also choose to exhale whatever you inhaled back at the boss, so just like uh, traditional Kirby fashion. But again, I do love this boss because it is one of the most unique uh, bosses I've seen in the Kirby series hands down, which does make you think. And this theme is pretty rocking as well. Um, you do hear it come back in um, Kirby's 20th anniversary game as one of the original challenges. But um, other than that, um, it doesn't really get remixed or doesn't get much appearances in uh, Kirby games or even um, uh, Smash Bros. games for that matter. I believe. I could be wrong. Um, but you could also damage the boss uh, if you have the combinations, and normally it takes three hits to kill them. So that does also train you again to explore and test how well you know your combinations of this game. And it's a nice build-up to uh, demonstrate how well you know Kirby's abilities in this entire game. So I very much applaud this boss as one of the uh, final bosses of this uh, game in terms of uh, Kirby and whatnot. Let's see if this dynamite will work. Not that much damage, unfortunately. Uh, let's see if it'll produce the bomb again. Nope, just fire, so that's not gonna do any damage. Boy, does it take long to explode, though. Very nice. Unfortunately, the double stars doesn't appear to do much damage. It seems to do the same amount of damage that it would if you were to do a regular um, projectile attack. Alright, so now that stone's done, um, you'll also notice that the eyes on the uh, on the figure, the white figure, um, it it tends to decrease for the amount of uh, abilities that you get rid of. So again, it's like uh, it also acts as like a health bar in a sense. If the uh, bottom one isn't that much of a um, a giveaway for you, but it looks like he's only stuck with the uh, bomb and fire. Oh, and spark! We've never seen spark until now. That's actually very surprising. Spark is the most um random to avoid, um, tends to go all over the place with its projectiles, and it wraps around as well, so you gotta be mindful of that. Spark and Fire has a fun combination though, um, I will show it off, Kirby grabs a towel and with the power of uh, static electricity, his head is on fire. <laughs> One of my favorite abilities in terms of aesthetics. And we got a double kill with that ability, we are now down to bomb with the final hit point. Shouldn't take too long. And death. Very nice. And that is the end of Ripple Star with our last crystal shard of the game. Special little animation too for picking it up with ribbon as well. Very nice. Now day's a, day is save. Um, Ripple Star is rid of black matter and all is right with the world. Or is it? Yep, so as I mentioned previously, there was a bit of an alternate ending. If you didn't get 100% of Crystal Shards, you wouldn't get to the true final planet, which will be revealed shortly. Um, the little stinger it shows is that the that queen that showed off more of that dark matter uh, was actually does a bit of a glare at you, particularly, <laughs> um, because you screwed up and didn't get 100%. But we got rid of the dark matter within the Fairy Queen, and we now see uh, Kirby's Warp Star, which surprisingly does not make an appearance in this entire game until now. For such a staple, it does make its uh, 
um, entrance, that's for sure. But I never realized that upon first playthrough that we never really got into much uh, um, with the... Uh, what's it called? With the Warp Star. But right now, here we are, the um, final, the true final planet of this game, known as Dark Star. Um, Dark Star has a small obstacle course here at the beginning, and it does demonstrate your partners helping you out once more. Um, there isn't really much to this first part here, but the second part, um, where we fight the true boss of this game, the true final boss of this game is where it's at, so... Adeline helps us with a maximum tomato, King DDD helps us propelling us forward, and we also get to experience the final combination here. Ribbon and the Crystal. And yes, for those who have played Kirby's Dream Land 3, myself not included, this is Zero, but reborn as Zero 2. Um, for those who have played Dream Land 3, there will be a lot of callbacks to the original uh, boss fight. Um, I, I can't really comment much about that personally because I haven't finished it, but that band band-aid at the top there was where the eye was initially. So, as you saw me go through the first and second phase, you have to shoot the eye, and after shooting the eye, you have to shoot the halo to break it, and once the halo is broken, you shoot the thorn at the bottom to actually damage Zero Two. Um, this song is very much well known as one of the most uh, best Kirby boss themes of all time. You do hear a remix of it in uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and uh, nothing else really for that matter. For it being one of the uh, most beloved themes of the franchise, um, it doesn't really get much of an appearance, but um, it is still one of my favorite tracks of all time um, in the Kirby franchise. Uh, also, with this boss fight, you can damage the wings of a Zero Two, and uh, you could break them off, but it doesn't really do much as a uh, besides just sh showing an aesthetic effect to it. Um, but yeah, you pretty much just gotta rinse and repeat this. Honestly, this one, the boss does take a little bit of time to figure out on first go, but just like any other boss, it does become very formulaic from there on forward. Um, the weird thing about this boss, you can also rotate him too, or rotate yourself for that matter. Um, rotate him left or right, depending on how you feel. Um, but that doesn't really help. <laughs> I used to do that before just for crafts and giggles when I was younger, but it really doesn't help in the long run. As long as you stick to sticking to the right and going back each time um, until it shoots another barrage at you, then you won't get damaged and you'll be fine. So I mean, in hindsight, it doesn't really offer much compared to Miracle Matter. I honestly feel like Miracle Matter is the better final boss compared to Zero Two, but Zero Two is there for those who have played Kirby's Dream Land 3. And that's it. That's the trilogy of Kirby 64 in terms of the Dark Matter saga. I feel the Dark Matter is all um, starting to get defeated over here, and they all escape soundly with the power of the Warp Star. And for their thanks, they all get awarded with the hero's reward of their own little crystal shards. I guess these are mock-ups or something. I don't know. Um, and... <laughs> corny, but you know, Kirby games. You can't really expect some death or things like that in terms of um, some of its execution. But you know, it's a nice cute little ending there. And yes, that was it, Kirby 64. Um, again, Kirby 64, the game itself, is a game that... Um, is a very decent Kirby game, not really one of my favorites, but it's one that I like to uh, pull out every now and then to just play through. It's a bit of a nostalgia um, to it for myself personally as well with some, um, uh, you know, it's just pretty well designed to be honest. And again, the abilities, like I mentioned previously, um, the combinations, while they're cool in terms of execution, I, I didn't really uh, like them in the long run because all the enemies pretty much die in one hit, so um, there isn't really much to say about the combinations besides just showing off what it means aesthetically. Compared to games like uh, Kirby Superstar, or even um, something like a Kirby in the Amazing Mirror, where it calculates damage depending on the ability that you use. It makes you adapt accordingly to how your abilities work in terms of damage, as opposed to how they work only with mere aesthetics, which is what um, this game demonstrates only. But again, still a very solid Kirby game. Um, someday I'll play through Kirby's Dream Land 3 to get the full effect of uh, why Zero Two became what he became to be, and the whole uh, Dark Matter trilogy. But um, overall, fun game. I had an, I had a great time going back to this game, 
And um, yeah, <laughs> thanks for uh, joining along with this ride. And for the next game that I'll be playing through on this channel will be another Nintendo 64 game. Something that I grew up with as well. So um, until next time, take care.